What do you get when you mix Death Guard with Fabius Bile and Friends? Cross them with Ravenwing and Deathwing Dark Angels, season with two top tournament players, and a table full of gorgeous terrain? You get this episode of 40K in 40 Minutes. Greetings 40K fans, JC McDowell here with a fantastic episode of 40K in 40 Minutes. Today, we face off two top tournament players, Mr. Jim Vessel and Mr. Gary Sacco. This episode is brought to you by GameMat.eu, makers of amazing mats, high quality and fantastic terrain that is ready to play right out of the box. It's all pre-painted, so you can just drop it on the table and you're good to go. We are very pleased to be playing on this terrain and Matt graciously supplied by them for this match. Be sure to check them out at GameMat.eu and tell them PlayOn sent you. Hey, my name is Jim Vessel. I'm here to play uh, some Death Guard and Word Bearers Evil Alliance with the help of Fabius Bile. Jim Vessel needs almost no introduction as he is a friend to the channel and has been on several times in the past. Mr. Politics and Plastic himself, not only is he an amazing painter, but he is a past Adepticon champion and has made more final tables than I have time to mention. Jim brings his Death Guard and Friends list today, and I gotta tell you, I am super excited to see this top tier tournament player throw down against his opponent, who is no slouch, Mr. Gary Sacco. Jim is bringing a plethora of beautifully painted and converted models here today, including Fabius Bile and a sorcerer with cultists and a patrol, as well as a battalion of Death Guard ferrymen, with a Demon Prince and Malignant Playcaster, Biologist Putrefire, and the Tallyman. 50 Pogswalkers in three squads, a squad of Possessed, two squads of Death Shroud Terminators, a Foul Blight Spawn, and two Plague Burst Crawlers. The Plague Burst Crawlers really provide some solid fire support, and I expect a lot out of them this match. I know Gary likes to wear pajama pants. I'm hoping that doesn't have an effect on the game. Uh, other than that, I know he's a really good player. He's uh, played a lot of different lists over the, over the years uh, in a lot of different events. He usually does pretty well. Uh, we've never actually played each other, so I'm excited to kind of put ourselves to the test and see what happens. Gary is a top player in his own right. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride, Gary has also made enough final tables to make most casual players quiver. So I'm Gary Sacco, some of you may know me, some of you may not, but uh, I'm running my Dark Angels today. Gary has countered with Raven and Deathwing for days. He's brought a bike captain and two Talon Masters, a massive bike squad that I expect he will combat squad, a blob of Relic Terminators with Lightning Claw and Bolter, a Landspeeder Storm and Relic Contemptor Dreadnought, heavy intercessors, as well as a chief apothecary, company veterans, and a full six-man squad of Inceptors. I love the Terminators, but really the Talon Masters are horrendously effective. I really think they're gonna be all-stars for Gary, so make sure to watch for them. Don't let the relaxed pajama pants fool you. Gary is tough as a $2 steak, and I am looking forward to one dead hard, tournament style 40K in 40 minutes. Our mission today is Battle Lines from the GT 2020 rulebook. Players deploy on the short ends of the table 24 inches apart. Primary take and hold objectives are worth five points should you hold one at the end of your command phase, five more should you hold two at the end of your command phase, and five more should you hold more than your opponent at the end of each of your command phase, to a maximum of 15 per turn and 45 for the game. For secondary objectives, Gary has chosen Stubborn Defiance, a Dark Angel specific secondary that will score him more points the longer he holds on to a specific objective. He's taken Assassinate, scoring three points for every character of gems that he kills, and he's taken Vital Ground, the mission specific. He'll score two victory points for each of the two center objectives that he holds at the end of his command phase, and three points should he hold gems, to a maximum of seven victory points per turn, and to always a maximum of 15 per secondary per game. Jim has taken Engage on all fronts, scoring points for having a model in each of the four table quarters. He's taken While We Stand We Fight, which is five points per each of these units that is left at the end of the game. His big unit of Death Shroud, his Possessed, and his Demon Prince. He's also taken Raise the Banners High, performing an action in his command phase and scoring in the next for every objective that he raises a banner on and extra points at the end of the game. Really tight deployment zones here. Jim's placed a Poxwalker unit and the three-man Deathstroud Terminators into reserve, and Gary has chosen to fully deploy everything.
With so many models, there isn't a lot of places for Jim to deploy, so he's really clustered around that central ruin while leaving his cultist out almost as a distraction. Gary spread wide and combat squatted his bikes and his inceptors. He's looking to make a speed rush up those streets, it looks like, and should he go first, he could be on Jim real quick. However, I'm concerned where he's placed those bikes. They're kind of out in the open. If he doesn't go first, he could lose them. Roll to go first. Looks like it's going to be Jim. Gary, let's have a good game. Yeah. Chaos forever. Uh, I'm gonna get started. Jim starts the game with seven command points. The tally man adds one more, and turn one he gains one to go to nine at the start of his turn one movement phase. Oh, uh, all right, so starting movement phase, so I'm gonna start with advancing my uh, Poxwalker unit here. There's not a ton of movement in here for him. He definitely doesn't want to overexpose, uh, but he's definitely gonna tie up some real estate. He's gotta work around that one crater, and it looks like he'd rather get what little cover it's gonna afford than run up that outside edge. I, I don't disagree here. Gary's got a lot of shots, and if he spreads too wide, he may end up getting shot off the table, even with all the defensive strength of all Death right. Guard. Next, I'm going to move my Death Guard Possessed. Just, they're just hanging up behind the wall. That's not so bad. File Master, Clone Lord, Fabius Bile is going to run right here. Various Sorcerers are going to move. All right, that's it for my movement phase. So we're gonna go to the psychic phase. He's buffed his possessed by one toughness from Fabius Bile, so they'll be even harder to shift now. And he's Miasma of Pestilence and Putrescent Vitality in his big unit of Poxwalkers. So that's gonna make them even tougher to shift. Couple of great psychic spells there for the Death Guard. Classics, if you ask me. So I'm gonna cast um, Warp Time. Goes off the nine. Okay. So it's gonna be a three inch range. Um, so I'm gonna cast that on the Blight Lord Terminators. And they're going to basically just move again. All right, so we'll start with uh, this Plague Risk Crawler. He's going to shoot at these bikes. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do both my intrigue cannons and my uh, mortar. Okay. Command point reroll for number of shots on his mortar on the Plague Burst Crawler and takes him down to eight. So two's to hit. So four wounds. Uh, and there, how much damage? Two damage. Two damage each. Each. Okay, so it will kill two bikes. All right, two shots from the um, entropy cannons. Both of them would be uh, three and proceed, so I'll kill these two bikes. Okay. There'll be four shots from the heavy slugger. So fourth. So 
So two wounds on the attack bike. He's got two left. They two have left. four. The attack bikes have four wounds. All right, next I will shoot my uh, next PVC. All right. So the mortar, we're going to shoot those guys okay. and the entropy cannons of the remaining biker. Okay. I'm going to spend one CP. Disgusting force on the plague burst crawler for one command point, and that's going to make the mortar do three damage per hit. Five saves. All right, so two two. Die. two die. All right, and then two entropy cannons into this guy. A lot. Both wounds. All right, go Plague Burst Callers. Amazing. Uh, that's the best Plague Burst Caller shooting I've ever done. That's going to be my turn. So it's going to go to you, Gary. He's raised a banner and put the hurt on Gary's bikes, but he hasn't engaged in all fronts. Real quick turn one and no score as of yet. Gary's turn one ticks up to eight command points, and he's going to stubborn defiance with his heavy intercessors in the objective of his home deployment zone and has moved up his inceptors as well. A lot of repositioning going on here for him. He's got to thin out Jim's beefy units early and hope that it's enough before he reaches them. He's going to advance, but he's going to stay there. Okay. Just gives him a four. four we'll see. Great. And I think my movement phase is finally done. All right. I'm going to spend two command points for weapons of the Dark Age, okay. giving all my plasma weapons plus or, uh, plus all one damage. In your full army? No, just the unit that I'm okay. declaring on. They're going to shoot the Poxwalkers. All right. Yeah. So I'm not going to overcharge because I'm only winning on threes. Okay. Uh, because it's their blast weapons and you have more than five models, I get automatic full shots. Okay. So it's 18 shots. Got it. And any other rerolls besides hits? I uh, reroll hits and the Telemaster's gonna give them reroll ones to win. Coming down on threes, rerolling. All right, all wounds. All wounds. Okay, so I'm just gonna use your dice. Yep, I sounds need sixes good. followed by six. So that's two. 15 total will go down. Four, yeah, 15, perfect. All right, there's five left. Hitting on fours. Ooh, blast weapons for the win. That's 15 Poxwalkers down, and the Terminators have finished them off. That is some serious firepower. My goal was hopefully get him to kill some of them, and then uh, ideally use the Deadwalk again stratagem to bring back some, and then uh, Daisy Chain onto the objective but he killed the whole unit by one. So I just needed to make one more six plus feel no pain. So that was a big thing that was supposed to happen that didn't happen. And I was relying on that for that 10 points out of turn. The Telemaster is going to shoot all of his shots at the possessed unit. All right, go for it. It's eight against you. So one die, uh, one takes one damage. Okay. Then we'll go with the assault cannon, twin. Four, four okay, wins. So one dies, two dies, and then one takes Pulls you out of range? Yep. Oh, that's a targeting mistake from Gary. He's fired his Talon Master first, killed two possessed, and that's taken his Inceptors out of range. That's a really big mistake, and I'm pretty sure those Inceptors are going to pay for it with their lives next turn. So this, these bikers are now going to shoot into them. Got it. Five. So one, one. one. Safe. The Dreadnought's going to shoot the Death Shroud two bikers. Okay. So you can see. You got it. I uh, reroll ones because the captain's there. Uh, fishing for those sixes. All safe. Two crack missiles. Mm -hmm. One hit. That's one Good. wound at negative and three. Four plus. Saves. Okay. Uh, so the last thing I have is the telemaster. Mm -hmm. And then he will shoot, because I can't see there. Okay, the guys. So I'll shoot the poxwalkers. Threes inside. So it's good going to damage. That's nothing, so three die. Okay. So the assault cannon. Sixes. And no more Poxwalkers on the board. And to turn one, no score for either side, but that's going to change quickly here as we move into the rest of the game. The Plague Burst Crawlers really did a lot of work for Jim. I kind of expect them to keep doing that. Gary doesn't have a ton of forward pressure right now, and he's not going to be able to get in to shut them down. So that has to be a priority for him. He's got to stop them from just devastating his army. Their first turn was brutal, and if they have another few turns like that, I don't think Gary is going to be sticking around for very long at all. 
Back up to nine command points for Jim at the end of his command phase, sees a score of six to nothing. Advances seem to be the order of the day for him as he's positioning to really punish Gary's forward forces. All right, time to bring in some deep strikers. So first, I'm gonna start, start with some pox walkers. So uh, pox walkers are gonna come in nine inches away from your death shroud. And then my death shroud, I think I am gonna bring them in. They're gonna drop just right here, they can. Ooh, I don't know about the positioning for those three death shroud. I think they need to be more aggressively placed. This feels a bit too defensive. So next, I'm gonna spend, um, I'm gonna use Fabius Bile, he's gonna, distort those terminators. Yeah. Um, so they're gonna, he's gonna give the uh, death shroud terminators plus one attack. Gary's using Auspex scan now to shoot those terminators for two command points and it's gonna bring him down to four remaining. He's targeting the incoming pog clock. Hitting on twos. Placement of those pox walkers feels like a bit of a throwaway from Jim here. I'm not sure what he's got planned. He's lost 11 of them to the Auspex scan. That's one of the few objective secured units that he's got left. So that's the end of the um, movement phase, so we'll go to the psychic phase. So let's start with the uh, sorcerer there. Um, he's gonna cast Smite. Goes off an eight. So on the I can't stop it. So three. One command point here for Jim to use Malevolent Covenant, and it's gonna give him a mortal wound, but he's automatically casting his power. Down to eight command points. Can't even be denied. Uh, next, the Demon Prince here will cast Smite. Goes off in a six. Whoa, three damage. Removes the Terminator. That's all for my Psychics. So I'm gonna go to shooting. Spending a command point on overwhelming generosity to make his foul Blight Spawn gain an extra six inches of range on his weapon. Takes him down to seven, but oh, he's doing some serious roasting. So, nope, two damage. Next, I'm gonna do uh, 3d6 Flamer Shots here into the Inceptors here. Three rolling ones. Ooh. Pass one, fail. So next, I will shoot uh, all the weapons from this Plagueris Crawler into the uh, guys up onto the runes there. Gary spins a command point, down to three, to defend against the Plagueris Crawler with transhuman physiology. All right, and then finally my two entropy cannons. To no avail. The that... next Plagueris Crawler is gonna shoot everything into here, okay. these Inceptors. That Plague Burst Crawler using Disgusting Force for a command point takes Jim down to six, makes for some seriously strong shooting. Jim uses a command point reroll here for his number of shots. Oof, Bye bye Inceptors. I believe that is my shooting phase, so let's go into charges. Uh, I might as well try it. I'll start try to charge the Death Shroud into um, these Terminators. I'm gonna need an 11. I have no overwatch. Pop a Nurgle, bless these dice, give me that 11. Don't do it, it's a trap. No. Jim has failed the charge and he's not re-rolling. What has he got planned here? Next, I will do the Possessed into the single biker. Go for it. The Poxwalkers will go into the Terminators. Gary's spending a command point to Overwatch with his Terminators versus the Poxwalkers and that takes him down to two. He's actually killed more of them. Mmm, mass reactive shells striking putrefied flesh. <laughs> Yummy. I gotta get a nine. Here, dice anymore. I'll there's an eight. I won't, I won't reroll that. So that is gonna be the end of my uh, charge phase. So going into the combat phase, so we'll start over there. So it's gonna be 20 attacks. Oh. Ugh. Jim getting veterans of the long war here for a command point to make his possess plus one to wound, takes him down to four and that ices that biker. I'm not sure if that's enough work in this turn for Jim, even though it was a lot. Only dice and time will tell. He ends his turn with six points. Up to three command points, scoring five on primary and two on stubborn defiance, gives Gary at present seven points to Jim six. So chapter master rerolls from the chapter master will now go on to the dreadnought. All right. Because he's a core unit. Uh, let's do some moving.
moving his Terminators into position. He's lost a lot of firepower, but can the Talon Masters turn the tide? I gotta really, I gotta really pick and choose my fights here. The Plague Wars Crawlers have done some work this game. They've oh, they've just MVP. annihilated everything. They made all their points back. Shot at, they I didn't think they were that good either. I'd never play with them. So now I'm like, all right, every game they're gonna get Plague Wars Crawlers. Okay, so the Contemptor is going to shoot at, he can catch this guy. Sure. Okay, sixes. There's three, so that's one dead Terminator. Uh, no negatives. So I'll save, so just one Terminator dies. Two crack missiles. Mm -hmm. one. Okay, so one takes one move. So this Talon Master will shoot everything into the same Terminator unit. Uh, so one takes one damage, and I have taken one, two wounds left on my attack. So the twin assault cannon now? Yep. All right, so unit, unit dies. I'll take that. Ooh, down go the Death Shrouds. That's a bit unexpected, but they did draw a lot of fire. Yeah, I'll shoot the other Talon Master yep. at the other Death Shroud. Got it. Excuse me. So one takes two damage. Saw cannon. Space Marines. So one dies and one takes a wound. This fella here, mm -hmm. I don't know if I put him in range. Shoot some heavy bolters at him, you know. Okay. Spice it up. Nothing. And uh, I don't hit you at all. So uh, good job. Jim has lost a lot of units, but so is Gary. The charge phase here is gonna be a big tell. All right. Okay, so we're gonna go with those Terminators first. Okay into the box walkers so only. just don't roll double ones, but I think even with double ones, you'll make it. Four inches, <laughs> you, you four make inches. it. Four inches. Looks like a... Five? Uh, five, yeah. Yeah, five, okay. So bike captain needs a five. You got it. So angry. So do you have anything that can like keep me locked in combat or in any other crazy stuff? Nope. Okay, so uh, do you have any like aura abilities from these Nothing. dudes that can get them? Nothing, Nothing. Nothing. And your dreadnought will go in now. Six. Just makes it. Oh, it just makes it. All right. So to start combat off, I will go with the bike captain first. Okay. Uh, he will throw all his attacks into. He's got the special mace of doom. Okay. So he's hitting you on twos. Uh, minus one because I have miasma. Okay. So I'm hitting you on threes. So three hits. Four hits. Yeah. Yeah. T six. Uh, I'm strength eight right now. Okay, so three to wound. Three to wound. Uh, a roll of a four up inflicts two mortal wounds and ends the damage. You got it. So he does... Two die. Um, one, one normal save. So he'll kill one. And then two more will die. And I will interrupt. So before you interrupt... Two command points for Gary for swift striking on his captain, and he's fallen back out of combat and not getting punched in return. That's huge! It's only gonna leave him with one command point, but that's a great spend. And you'd like to interrupt? I'm or? interrupting. Okay. Yep, yeah, so I'm gonna interrupt with the possessed. Jim spending two to interrupt and punch the dreadnought with his possessed, spending a third command point for veterans of the long war to get plus one a wound, and leaves him with one command point as well. He's also oh. left the dreadnought with three wounds remaining. Right, so you make three, so you take six damage. So right now, the dreadnought's gonna swing. There's, oh, six. Oh. Three on fours. So three hits. Only three. Strength. Uh, 14. Okay, so he's gonna do twos. And then on twos. To obliterate one with five. Uh, and then we'll do the Lightning Claw Terminators next. Okay, some very dead Poxwalkers. All right, we're gonna And there go the Poxwalkers. I wonder what Jim was thinking here with them. And a turn score is seven to six in favor of Gary, but I gotta wonder if he's done enough here. That swift strike move was pretty solid. However, he has to worry about those plague burst crawlers. He still hasn't got any pressure on them, and they're still free to target whatever they choose to. He's in a good position, but he only has a single point lead. Going into turn three, this could be big. Jim ticking up to two command points, but no Mr. Taliban tallying his banana this turn, so it's just the two for now, as well as 10 more primary and one more banner for a current total of 17 points. Moving Psykers into position, he's gotta be careful as Gary has chosen Assassinate as a secondary, and exposed characters will be prime targets for him.
boom, boom, boom. All right, that's all my movement. So I'll start with my psychic phase. Smite from Living Lip Tidecaster onto the Dreadnought. Goes off an eight. Nice damage. Two. You have one more smite that you can take me? That's correct. Uh, do they have pistols? Nope. No. And then it's just a regular smite from him. That's right. I'm going to use Armor of Contempt on the Dreadnought. Okay. Giving me a five up ignore, ignore damage. Mm hmm. Fives! Nope. No! Okay, next I'm going to cast Smite from the Chaos Sorcerer. Give me on a 12. 12. Four. Fails. Uh, sorry, I'm going to spend one CP to auto cast that. Psychic phase, and again he's failed to cast, so he's going to use Malevolent Covenant for a command point to take him down to one. And yeah, it auto cast, but he takes another mortal wound. I don't know if that's a great trade off at this point. Taking damage on a character that your opponent scores a secondary on, hmm, that's a tough call for me. So what? Oh, oh, can he roll that five? So you don't want to roll five here. Five! Yes! Right. Ooh, the Dreadnought lives. A command point on Armor of Contempt has saved his bacon. He lives. Yes! Okay. All right, over here, um, the Doom Crypt can cast Light. Goes off the seven. So one. Let's start with that Plague Bridge Crawler back there. Okay. I'm gonna shoot Entropy Cannon, Heavy Sluggers into here. Okay. Um, big Mortar into the uh, five man unit. Wouldn't be on fours because of so Transhuman. Four. Two ups. Doesn't look. Still fail a save. All right, two Entropy Cannons. And wounding on a two, or four, that's a wound. Five up involve. Nope. And then D6 shots into the guys in the back. Threes to hit, nothing. Next, uh, same thing here. I'm gonna do uh, entry cannons, heavy sluggers into the terminators. And then the um, Plagueris Mortar into the uh, heavy, heavy intercessors. intercessors. Fast play when half of each army is dead for sure. Thank you. All right, next I will do the uh, heavy slugger. Force wounds, far back. Loves it. The Plagueris Mortar into the Heavy Intercessors. And one wound. Uh, five up save. Oh, he makes it. Plagueris Gauntlets will shoot into the uh, Terminators. Okay. So 46 Flamer Shots. Five, and with full rerolls. All good. Space Marines. All right. At the start of my charge phase, the uh, Biology Peace Rise are going to enhance them, so they get uh, Mortals on sixes to wound. All right, so charges. So I'll start with the Demon Prince. We'll charge into the Terminators. It is seven inches. Up over here. That. Then the Blight Lord Terminators are going to charge into the Terminators as well. Just like that. All right, no other charges, so go to close combat. I'm going to do the uh, Death Shrouds first. Okay. So first I'm going to do the um, Champion. They're going to use, he's going to use a sweep attack. So it's going to be 10 attacks from a sweep. Okay. Hitting on twos, re-rolling ones because of the Demon Prince. Yeah. Double score, but transhuman. Okay, so I'm going to need force the wound. And rerolling all wounds. That was the wound. I'm gonna reroll all my wounds. Uh, you failed two. Okay. So six total damage. That's right. Dang. Now the rest of the unit. 32 attacks. Hitting oh. on twos. Rerolling ones. Twos. And then wounding on fours. Sixes are mortal. That's all all right. Sixes. So I'm gonna keep my sixes. And then using Arching Camera, I'm gonna reroll all my other dice, even though they wound, and get fish for more sixes. 12, 15, They're 17 dead. mortal wounds. 17 mortal wounds! Wah, wah. Ladies and gentlemen, Death Shroud Terminator. Um, all right, um, so it goes to you now, because it's your, uh, so it switches over to you. So the Contemptor Dreadnought will attack mm -hmm. into the... Possessed. Possessed. Fours. Oh, no, sorry, hitting on threes. Okay. Five, so I'm doing the reroll. 14. Uh, just two wounds at negative four. So one goes through, so one dies. Okay. The Dreadnought kills the Possessed in four fight back. And the dread goes down! Jim ends his turn with 20 points by scoring engage on all fronts for three to Gary's current total of seven. Gary gets back his command point and Jim's tally man tallies to get him up to two. He scores five on primary and three more on stumber defiance to go to 15 to Jim's 20. So chapter mastery rolls, he will give it to himself. You can do that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because he gave it to core or character. Mm -hmm. You know, those characters are open now, and Gary really needs to key in on them to rack up the assassination points. Seriously important shooting phase for Gary here. All right, so start the shooting phase. Yep. The chapter master will shoot the foul blight spawn. Okay. So shoot you with the melta. Okay. Down goes the foul blight spawn. This teleman is going to shoot the malignant play, playcaster. So 
takes one wound. And the assault cannon. Yep. It takes okay, one left. Yep. This Talon Master. Yep. Assault cannon here. Heavy bolt through there. Okay. Okay, so we'll go with the assault cannon. Fail me one. Done. Down goes the malignant plate gas. Now firing the twin heavy bolter into the sorcerer. You got it. Down goes the word bearer sorcerer. That's nine victory points for Gary for killing those three characters. These two guys here, they're gonna shoot their plasma pistols into the the possessed. They're hitting on threes. Threes. Damn. Same the, thing. Yeah. Fives. So one dies, one takes a wound, and one dies. And uh, we're going for the charge phase now. Uh, we'll start with Telemaster. Mm -hmm. Seven, he makes it in. The bike captain will go in. Okay. Apparently that's my, my new lucky number. This Telemaster will go in for an eight. Mm -hmm. The two guys will go in. That's champion. it. Yep. Uh, we will start the fight with the bike captain, hitting on twos. Uh, winning you on your T6, so winning on threes, but a roll of a four inflicts two mortal wounds. Uh, it does eight minutes. mortal wounds to the unit. And a turn three, and what a massive shift for Gary. His shooting was absolutely devastating that turn. He's sitting on a four point lead, and Jim's hard up against it. Gary should be able to touch those Plague Burst Crawlers and maybe slow one of them down next turn, but really, Jim has to get onto those heavy intercessors and stop them scoring Stubborn Defiance. Next turn, Gary is going to score four more points for them if Jim cannot clear them off that objective. It is absolutely vital that he do so because potentially, Gary can start running away the score just with those units. Picking up to four command points and the tally man, Jim has really laser focused here on how he can win. He somehow got to kick those heavy intercessors off their stubborn defiance objective and reset that clock without losing his key while we stand we fight units that he has remaining. It's a super tight scoring game here and that last turn really hurt him. Spending a command point on swapping out a spell on his Demon Prince to give it warp time and slingshot her up the board. Plague Burst Crawlers are still doing work, but Jim is running out of assets. He needs to get some work done here. Uh, no more psychics, so straight into shooting. So I'll start with uh, this Plague Burst Crawler. Uh, we'll shoot everything but the mortars into the Talon Master. Uh, the mortar is going to shoot at the uh, heavy heavy entrances. Entrances. two entropy cannons. Because he moved. Loves it. Good. Uh, four stubbers. Uh, three of those to a four up. All right, takes a wound, down to seven. Uh, big gun. Uh, I'll CP that. Command point reroll takes him down to two command points remaining. Uh, reroll on one. Three of goes to a five up. Oh, I'm making it. All right, same thing on the other one, to be cannons. Reroll the one. Fives. Oh, I pass one, fail one. So two five wounds. He's down to two. Four stubbers. Fives. Fours. Oh, he's down uh, to one. one. And then the mortar. Reroll one, so one wound. Uh, five up save, uh, fail, how much damage? It's that's flat two right now, right? flat two, yeah. Ignore damage from the apothecary, still don't make it. All right, that's it for uh, shooting, so charges. The demon prince will charge into the heavy intercessors. Here comes his demon prince, and Gary's not overwatching. Jim's dropping a command point on befouled incubators for one, and Gary spends his command point on transhuman physiology. Trading blows here, hoping and praying. He's staying out of heroic intervention range. Because I could potentially tank everything with the Apothecary. Talons first. It's all good. Six up. Nice. So you've killed two models. Okay. So they were charged. Mm -hmm. so three, six. Ten attacks from these mighty intercessors. Hitting you on twos. Five wounds, uh, no, no negatives. All right, so the first one. Second one. Third one. Fourth one. And the fifth one I'm going to take on is Invol. Okay, so he passes all saves. End of his turn, and Jim's got another three on engage on all fronts that takes him to six so far. 
He still has two while we stand we fight units on, but those aren't tallied till the end of the game. Raise banners, he's got three primary 25, 34 points for Jim currently. On to Gary's turn, they each have a command point and there's not a lot for him to do. Apothecary's throwing a crack grenade sure. to the new prince. Yep. Five. Uh, negative two. One whole damage. Okay, down seven. The land speeder storm will fire everything. Mm -hmm. Shots. Hitting on, hitting on five. Good. The bike captain mm -hmm. shoots. So just one. Talon master will shoot everything at him. Mm -hmm. So heavy bolter. That saves. Twin assault cannon. Mm -hmm. T7. So it takes three. So he's got three left. Okay. Uh, so everything will go into these cultists. Sure. Uh, the heavy bolter. So six hits. So three die. Okay. The assault cannon. Oh, okay. So there's one left. Okay. Uh, we now go to the very crucial assault phase. Mm -hmm. The bike captain needing a six to get in. Got it. Anything like that? No. So he's gonna go ripping over to here. The apothecary will run in. That Talon Master will charge the Plague Burst Crawler. Okay, go ahead. Touch it in there. Mm -hmm. Chapter Master mm -hmm. is going to take some mighty swings. Uh, hitting on twos. Fours or better will inflict two mortal wounds. The Demon Prince is in trouble. He's got to kick it off that objective, but hold on. Jim spends his command point on an eruption of filth. The Demon Prince blows up and spreads some mortal wound goodness about. Okay, do you want to go over here? Four attacks. Mm -hmm. Fives, a so single the, damage. Saves. Uh, I'm just gonna roll for my cultists. They're gonna run. End of that turn, Sorry. and the score is now 43 to 34 in favor of Gary. What a massive swing. With the change to second player scoring at the bottom of turn, it's pretty clear what Jim's got to do here. He needs to clear the units off the top objective and then stop the captain from being able to go anywhere. An uphill battle to be sure, but well within the capabilities of what he has remaining on the table. Just a little bit of luck and some of that Plague Burst Crawler goodness is all he needs. She's just gonna pop behind this little wall, so he's still within three inches, but out of line of sight. All right, so shooting phase. I'll, well, I'll start with the stuff that I can only do. He's gonna shoot everything into combat. Heavy sluggers, so five saloons. Makes that save. Okay, two entropy cannons, one hit. Uh, plague weapon, nothing. And then his mortar is blast, so he can't shoot it. Uh, next, I'll do the next PBC. The mortars at these two guys here. So they have uh, combat shields, which gives them a two-up save, and they're touching the cover, so they have a one-up save right now. I have to kill you off the objective, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. Uh, yeah, either way, there's nothing. Yeah, so mortar into those two guys, and then everything else into the other... Um, Talon master? Other Talon master. Does this finish him? Yeah, it does. Does he blow? Does he explode? Please do. He does. He does. They're gonna get mortals. Ooh, that Talon Master's exploded. That's a great start. He needs to clear this objective. Okay, so next uh, I'll do the mortar then. Mortar into the veterans. Six shots. Oh no! Six misses! Wow! If I just killed two two wound marines with that Plague Burst Crawler, I think I either tie the game or maybe even win the game, and I wasn't able to do it, so just an unbelievable turn of dice. The Death Shroud are in to try to steal that objective, but with only two for banners and two more at game end, two more for engaging all fronts, and potentially losing his five for while we stand we fight on his Death Shrouds, if they get dummied off the table, this game may have hinged on that Plague Burst Crawler missing its six shots. Okay, uh, the Plague Burst Crawler is going to charge into your Talon Master. All right, let's do some uh, close combat. I think that's it. So I'll start with uh, my Death Shroud, I guess. Yeah, so five attacks, sitting on threes. So threes. Uh, does he explode? He does not. Okay. So yeah, go ahead with uh, your well Heavy Intercessors. Hit now on twos. Reroll ones to hit. Maybe Assault Doctor. They don't care. That was brutal. Okay, all right, so it goes to you. So that's the end of my turn. 
Gary's repositioned a bit to maximize the amount of firepower the Death Shroud will take, using a command point to fall back and shoot with his remaining Ravenwing Talonmaster. And should he kill those Death Shroud, that's a 10-point primary for him, and a removal of 5 for Jims while we stand we fight. And that'll basically seal the deal for Gary. Uh, the chapter master will shoot, so is uh, Melta. Mm -hmm. uh, so shooting in them, hits, wounds. Goes through. Doing seven damage. Kills another one. Uh, now we're going for charges at this point. So sure. the bike captain goes in. CP. The apothecary will go in. Okay, mm -hmm. so we'll go with the bike captain first. Yep. Hitting on two. And there it is, folks. What an incredibly close game. A couple of missteps for both players, and we have a 15 point difference only. Jim scores 8 for Engage on all fronts, 0 on While We Stand We Fight, 7 for Raise Banners, 30 on Primary to take him to 45, plus 10 for Paint is 55. Gary scores 14 on Stubborn Defiance, 12 on Assassinate, 4 on Vital Ground, and 30 on Primary to take him to 60, plus 10 for Paint is 70. Your final score is 55 to 70 in favor of your winner, Gary Sacco. What a tight, fantastic game from both players. Thank you to Gary and Jim for an incredibly tight strategic game. Really fun, gentlemen. That was awesome. Also, a big thank you to GameMat.eu for this amazing mat and terrain. Always grateful to use their stuff in game. Be sure to check them out and tell them PlayOn sent you. On behalf of all of us here at Play on Tabletop, this is your host, JT McDowell, saying, until the next time you see us in the grim dark universe of the far flung future, Play on! Finally got a win on Play on! Yeah! I, I'm not upset about it, but it is a dice game, so they kind of they kind of made up for it in the end, the Plague vs. Crawlers. It, it kind of averaged out their damage, so. You had, to, you had to bring your A game, or you were just gonna get, you know, kind of pushed to the side. You know, it was, it was nice to just roll dice and, and get to play a game.